So imagine a giant iceberg pressing down on San Antonio. That iceberg is diabetes, the combination of diabetes and obesity. This is a relatively new problem, but it's a very serious one, and it's a very, very big one. Like most icebergs, icebergs, the most visible part is above the water, and in Bear County, that's 150,000 diagnosed diabetics. Add to that 60,000 undiagnosed diabetics. They have the disease, but they don't know it. Put it together, that's 18% of the adult population has diabetes, one in five adults. Then the enormous part that's under the water, that's pre-diabetics, people who are likely to become diabetic, and those who are obese. Altogether, we're talking about <clears throat> 500,000 people in our county who are at risk for some very, very bad things. So diabetes, what is it? Because of lack of insulin or the resistance to insulin, diabetics are unable to process the sugar that they take in every day. And in childhood, diabetes comes on very suddenly and the kids become deathly ill and would die unless they got insulin. In adults, however, it's very gradual. And it takes years for the ability to effectively produce insulin to be overwhelmed and exhausted by the huge amount of sugar that is currently in the American diet. And that is 80 pounds of extra sugar per person per year. Food is half of it, candy, cookies, ice cream, etc. And the other half is liquid sugar, soda, or other sugary drinks. This will be a surprise to some of you. In one bottle of, uh, a large bottle of regular soda, are 20 teaspoons of sugar, that's 100 grams. One soda per week, per day, for a week is 700 grams. That's a pound and a half of extra sugar per week. Now, why does this arithmetic matter? Well, there's two reasons. One is that for the last 30 years in the United States, we know that diabetes has doubled. And it's doubled in parallel with the doubling of our sugar consumption. And the other reason it matters is because today, in Bear County, 64% of people drink soda every day. So, adult diabetics awash in sugar, their vital organs wither away. Diabetics become blind because the blood supply to their eyes dries up. Their kidneys dry up and fail to work. Fingers, toes, feet become lifeless and have to be amputated. A typical story in San Antonio is a fairly young man, usually Hispanic, Let's say he works construction. He works long hours, very hard, and he feels fine. But then one day he gets a sore on his foot that doesn't heal. And after some delay, he goes to see a doctor. And he learns he's diabetic, and he has two toes amputated all in one week. Eighteen months later, he's had a few more amputations, and he can no longer walk, so he loses his construction job. And in five years, he's dead from complications of diabetes, and his family is on their own. And the tragedy is that most adult diabetes can be prevented. The very accurate blood tests that we use to diagnose diabetes can also be used to identify those people who are pre-diabetic and to monitor them so they don't become diabetic. That monitoring plus Adequate diet and exercise is often enough. And when it isn't, we have many medicines that are very effective for delaying or even completely stopping the progression of the disease. For advanced diabetics, insulin in its many forms is very effective. But ironically, modern medicine with all of its high-tech tools hasn't even made a dent in this epidemic. 
In fact, it gets worse every year. And that's because two things are missing. And without those two things, modern medicine will continue to fail. And the first thing is community. People helping others and helping themselves be healthy. And there are many examples of this in San Antonio today. In YMCAs, in churches, in community centers, diabetics and pre-diabetics are working together to be healthy. At community gardens, they are getting exercise, they're meeting their neighbors, and they get free vegetables. Nowadays, people bike all over San Antonio. My friend Dante Jones leads a bike caravan every Saturday of children and adults exploring the city. He's known as the Pied Piper of the West Side. Zumba, everybody loves Zumba. It's great exercise, but it's even better when you do it with a whole bunch of people in front of the Alamo at the start of Ciclovia. And three weeks ago, 70,000 people did that. I, I hope some of you were part of that. Um, somebody was. Um, and neighborhood uh, walking clubs, they get people of all ages out of their houses, physically active, socially active. And that's what community is. It's people helping others, helping themselves be healthy. And the second thing that's needed is political action. Those folks to stay healthy who like to walk around in their neighborhoods during the night, they might have to petition the city to fix the sidewalks or to get the wild dogs off the street. And that's political. Similarly, in Texas, when we speak up about the six million people who never get preventive health care because they don't have health insurance, that is political. And here in San Antonio, where we see the very close relationship between obesity and drinking soda every day, and we organize a campaign to get people to break that terrible habit, that is very political. Not because people don't get the connection, everybody does, but because it butts up against some very powerful po forces. And that's what public health is all about. Public health is where power and politics meet science. And public health stands its ground. And, and that's something I feel very strongly about, in part because of an experience I had a few years ago in Wisconsin, where I'm from. I was working one evening in Children's Hospital in Milwaukee, and in walks a cute little curly-haired girl with an earache, holding on to her curly-haired mother's hand, and I took a look at her, and then I diagnosed ear infection and handed them a prescription, which I've done a thousand times. But then something unusual happened. The mother said to me, and don't you remember me, Dr. Schlenker? You were my favorite doctor. You saved my life. And slowly, slowly, I did remember a curly-haired teenager. It was a teenage diabetic, completely out of control. She wouldn't take care of herself, she wouldn't take her medicine, she rejected her parents, the doctors, and almost every month she would be carried into the emergency room, dehydrated, sunken eyes, orange teeth, ketones on her breath, truly almost dead. And I did save her life. I think I saved her life two or three times. And so did the other doctors who were on call those nights when she would come in. And here she was 20 years later, even though none of us thought that she would survive to her 18th birthday. She grew up to be a beautiful, healthy woman with a beautiful, healthy daughter. And so, wasn't it lucky that we didn't give up on her on those long, cold, Wisconsin nights on call. And wasn't it lucky she didn't give up on herself? So in the same way, we can't give up on the people of San Antonio. And we can, all of us, be part of the solution. We can be part of the community of support, start in your own neighborhood, 
but then also work for an entire city that is safer, more walkable, more bikeable, more connected, more inclusive, and be politically active. Coming up on November 15th, the Affordable Care Act insurance uh, marketplace will be reopening. Try to find a friend or a family member or a neighbor who doesn't have health insurance and point them in the right direction. And more globally, very globally, what we're seeing from the beverage industry now is they would like us to friend somebody by sending them a bottle of soda with their name printed on it. Have you seen this? But a true friend, a real friend, would say, soda? No, thank you. <laughs> this is our image from Metro Health. And that's not going to end obesity all by itself, and it's not going to do it tomorrow. But in a city like San Antonio, where most people drink soda every day, isn't that the logical next step? Thank you.